Hello, and thanks for joining us on, on another edition of Veterans of the Valley. You know, he grew up in a small South Texas town amid the gently rolling hills of the coastal plains, down around Victoria, Quero, Goliad, if you're familiar with that area of DeWitt County, a little place called Yorktown, Texas. And by the way, it's the home of the annual Western Days Festival. And it's still there, and you can Google it if you feel the urge. He went to Texas A&M. He was the class of 1944B, and he joined the Army Air Corps and flew 35 missions in a B-17 bomber, the type of plane made famous by movies like 12 O'Clock High with Gregory Peck and the Memphis Bell. Veterans of the Valley welcomes B-17 bomber pilot Taylor Riedel to today's show. Taylor, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Pick us up from basically Texas A&M, the class of 44, and you join the Army Air Corps. What, what transpired after that? Well, uh, uh, I got called onto active duty shortly uh, in 43. And I was, actually, strange, I was a class of 44 at A&M. I was in the class of uh, 44B with the Air Corps in the cadet training program, which meant that I was scheduled to get my wings in, in February of 44. Okay. So I started my training in, in uh, February of 43. In 43? 43. 43. They first sent us, like anyone else who joins the service, to a basic training facility out in Wichita Falls, Shepherd Field. Mm -hmm. And we were there about six weeks doing normal Army stuff while training. Learning to march, and that kind Learn of stuff. to march. That's correct. <laughs> right. Learn to march. Then they, uh, then they sent us to uh, uh, from there, out to uh, California to, uh, to kind of schedule, see what they wanted to do. Now, now was that King City, California? No, this was. Uh, uh, I can't think of the name of it right okay. now. But anyway, we were just there a short period of time, and they instituted a new program at that time where. Instead of sending you directly into your pre-flight training and so forth, they sent sent you to various universities in the country for training. And since it was a new program, they set it up for, uh, it's a three-month program, but they set it up, the first group it went were six weeks, the second one two months, and the third one three months, so they could integrate. Kind of ramped it, it up it, into it ramped it up. And there they gave you all kind of tests and things and determined whether to assign you to uh, uh, pilot training or navigator training or bomber training or I mean or, or yeah bombardier training whatever mm -hmm. and from there then you started your training and I, I, I was lucky and drew pilot training so did, did you have a preference before that yeah, oh yeah I had a preference I and had, what was that uh, my preference <laughs> was to fly uh, uh, P-38 you know that was a twin engine right uh, fighter but uh, they uh, they sent they didn't make that decision at that time. Everybody took the same primary training. Mm -hmm. So we went to King City, California for primary training. Primary flight training. Primary flight training. Okay. We flew a little, like a Cub type plane, you right. know. And then after you completed that, if you did, they sent you to basic training, and that was in, uh, also out in California. And from there, then they sent you to advanced training. And that's when I found out that they had assigned me to a four-engine training instead of a two-engine for the P-38. And that was out in what, Douglas, Arizona? Douglas, Arizona. Right. Yeah. Excuse mm -hmm. me, I said California, Douglas, Arizona. Okay. Uh, which is where we, uh, where we actually did the, the training. And Douglas, Arizona was right on the border from uh, Mexico. You could walk back and forth across the bridge, mm -hmm. Kingman and Douglas. So we, I mean, uh, Pedro Snegers. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so that's where, no, that was Douglas, Arizona. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we took pr primary flight training, I mean, four-engine flight training there, or actually it was two-engine, but it was preparing for it. Then they sent us out to uh, uh, Salt Lake City for a, a short period of time to kind of assemble the crews and do some basic flight training. Okay, so so there, uh, that's where you basically formed your what ten man crew? I yeah, believe, right. Ten man crew. Yeah. There. So so once you, that's where you get your crew together, and then what happens? Well, then they uh, then they sent us to Ardmore, Oklahoma, uh, to do some uh, quite a bit of flight training in uh, in a B seventeen, mm -hmm. 
and from Ardmore, Oklahoma, then we were assigned to go overseas. So we left Ardmore and went to Lincoln, Nebraska, then picked up a B-17 and flew it into Scotland via Newfoundland and uh, uh, Greenland. So, so what's your, your what, 20, early 20s at that, at that point in time? Yeah, right. And the Army Air Corps is fixing to turn a, a B-17 bomber over to you and nine other gentlemen to yeah. <laughs> fly basically across the ocean uh, and yeah. land at some place uh, in Britain. Right, right, right. What was going through your head about that time? Oh, well, you know, we were excited about it, and, and uh, uh, we weren't, weren't looking forward to, to uh, combat as such, but we were excited in getting on with it. Well, How long of a flight was that? Do you remember going from that? That's quite a ways over over the water. Well, we landed. Uh, we landed at Greenland. In Greenland. Yeah. And, okay. and I think we maybe landed in Nova Scotia, too, and picked up oh, some okay. fuel and then went to Greenland. And from Greenland, we flew into Scotland, Scotland and we turned the aircraft over to the Eighth Air Force. I there. got you. That's got a, that's a lot of traveling for a, a young young man yeah, from uh, right. Yorktown, Texas. Right. What, what was it. going through your head of going through all these places and then all of a sudden ending up uh, in Great Britain? Oh, well, that was great fun. We that was, that part was good. You know, they went. Uh, it was exciting to. So, to so do where all did you that. put down at in in England there for the? Uh, uh, in, in Scotland. In Scotland. I right. don't remember actually. We just landed it and left the plane, and then they assigned us to the. Uh, 306 bomb group, which was located in Luton, which is on the main railway line between London and Scotland, okay. about 30 minutes out of London. So we were stationed only about 30 minutes from London. Oh, that, that was pretty good duty, though. Oh, yeah, that was good duty. Yeah. So uh, uh, visit London much? Yeah, we sure did. You could, uh, we got a, uh, frequent passes, and we'd go down, just go down to the train station, get on the train, and go into London and right. come back. And you were also part of the you were part of the 306th bomb group, but you were also part of what was the I believe the 423rd, 423rd bomb squad bomb squad right. Right. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the 423rd. Well, the, the 423rd was uh, uh, they had been over there quite a while. They're one of the early groups to go over, and uh, they have three squadrons in each group. Mm -hmm. Or four is it? I don't know. Anyway, but and how many this, planes are in a squadron? Uh, well, on a combat mission, they're 12. Okay. Okay. Is that normal? Yeah. On they're, you're basically in groups of six, uh, three. Okay. And, uh, and, and six, three up and three down, and then you had one, two, three of those forming the squadron. What was the, what was the significance of up and down? Well, the, with the uh, uh, armament on the B-17, the, the uh, ball turret gunner, the tail gunner, the the side gun and so forth, it set up a field of fire around that group of planes to protect you from the German uh, fighters. Right. Yeah. So that's what, the, that's what that maintained. What was, uh, when you got your call to do your very first mission, I believe, to over to Caen, France, what was going through your, you and your crew's head? <laughs> oh, of course, we were excited and apprehensive. Uh, we were thankful, though, that we'd got an assignment to Cannes in France instead of somewhere in Germany. Somewhere deep <laughs> on, within Germany, on, right? On the first mission, yeah. So did everything go okay that first yeah, mission? Yeah, oh, it went fine. Yeah. So take us through a normal uh, day, because you didn't fly every day, right? No, 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 no. About every other two, three days, something like that? Well, you see, I threw 35 missions, and I was over there from June to, uh, you know, about a year right. to fly those. Uh, what happened... Uh, the night before you, a mission, they would post on a bulletin board all the crews that were assigned to fly the next morning. They didn't say where you were going or anything like that, just that it's you were scheduled to be, <laughs> to be in the group. And uh, they, woke, they would awaken you about 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. You'd go down and have breakfast, and then you'd go to a briefing, and then you'd... Uh, uh, check your airplane, get everything going, and that, that took a, a period from about 2 o'clock till, say, 6 o'clock, and then you'd take off normally around 6 or 7 o'clock, fly, and then come back about 8 hours later normally. Okay. What, what goes on in the aircraft 
uh, with you and your crew that sometimes you're going for a, quite a long ways before you actually get to your target. Is there, oh, is yeah. there much chatter? Is, is, <laughs> do you, is there a lot of checkoffs yeah, that go on yeah, in, well, in B-17? Just, just normal jam, you know, <laughs> with 10 guys in there and talking about that various thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us, what about any of the, any, any particular mission really stick out in, in, in your head of, of things that maybe made it a little bit more dicey or, or well, were there missions that were more leisurely? I hate to yeah, use that word, well, but obviously if you're not flying deep into the heart of Germany, yeah. you're not going to get that much AAA. Well, the, 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 the missions you didn't look forward to, so, <laughs> so to speak, you always had 35 in front of your mind that you said, well, this is one and I've got 34, 34 more to go, more to go. <laughs> and so forth. But, right. Yeah, so you always often hope for a mission to Belgium or France or someplace like that. And the, the ones that you were, you went deep into Germany, Berlin, for example, mm -hmm. would, uh, would be a hairy one because they protected Berlin the best they could. Right. And uh, those were tough. <laughs> Let's jump back a little yeah. bit. Talk about London. You went into London. And said, what about some of the, the nighttime bombing that, that we all hear about in the, the V-1 and the V-2 oh. rockets? Well, of course, it, it, uh, if you were to go down and go into London, and everybody traveled a lot by subway and so forth, and they were various layers mm -hmm. under the ground, you know, underneath the ground. And they had all the, all the, were lined with all the subway platforms back were lined with bunks, and the British people would come down, leave their houses above, and come down and spend the night mm -hmm. in there f for protection from the German bombing. Well, toward the last of the war, the uh, German bombers didn't come over much anymore because uh, we had established air superiority, and mm -hmm. but they came up with uh, two. Uh, Robots, I guess. <laughs> that V1, like a better term, right? Yeah, V1 and V2. The V2 was like a little old uh, Piper Cub or something, and it it had made a funny sound, a put 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 put, and it flew along. And as long as you could hear that put 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 put, you you knew you were all right because it was still flying. But when it stopped the put put, that meant it was going into a glide, right, and would come down. Now you couldn't do that with the V2 because they were super. They were faster than sound, and they you didn't hear them till they exploded. Right. Yeah. Anything else? No. <laughs> <laughs> what What did uh, I understand? You there was a little bit of uh, trepidation, I guess, from your mother back at home when you had talked to her and she told your friends basically that you were basically the pilot of a B-17? Yeah. And, and what was their response? I found that rather humorous. Oh, that was, that was true. Well, of course, you have to realize uh, in, a, in a small town like I grew up in that the, uh, everybody knew everybody. Mm -hmm. And not only did my mother know me, but the neighbor knew me and various ones did. And one neighbor lady told my mother, and my mother related over to me, said, you know, I, I just don't know about our government. Said they're, they're entrusting a big Expensive aircraft <laughs> like that to to Taylor. <laughs> but did you get to go back later and say, "See, I, I could do it"? <laughs> no, I, I don't think she told me who who, <laughs> who said that. No. Uh, let's, we've got some pictures. Let, let's yeah. go ahead and let them uh, load up the pictures, and you can tell us if you. We got some really interesting yeah. stuff that you were able to give to us, and let's uh, see what the first one looks like coming up here. Ex tell us what this is. Oh, this is a, a publication that the the Eighth Air Force put out that. Uh, about the Eighth Air Force telling what they were doing and how they were doing. M more so or less forth. like a, a, a public, public relations? Yeah, public relations type thing. Type, yeah. Now, was this, was this uh, publication, was it for the people on, it was, it was for the Americans, for the, for the Flyboys and for, the, for our side more Yeah, or less. right, right. Did anything ever go on where, uh, and nowadays, where you drop pamphlets to the enemy, oh, yeah. that kind of thing? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Did y'all do? Yeah, well, yeah you did. And that was a, considered a pretty good mission, too. You okay. Know, because, you just go in there and drop some pamphlets. And Do you remember out. what any of the pamphlets said? No, nah, no, nah, not particularly. Not particularly? Okay. Yeah. Let's get back to the pictures and see what was coming up next. Now, this is the, I guess, for lack of a better term, this was the centerfold of that yeah. same publication. Yeah. And as you can see, it, it kind of, uh, we've got the original here, and it actually tells you of, of what all the numbers were. 
yeah. about how many bombs were dispatched. You can see the number there. I guess that's 221,811. Yeah. Uh, how many bombs were dropped? 443,969. Nine. Yeah. How often did this, this publication come out? Do you remember? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know that it's, it, it gives any. This, I don't, know, I don't think it does. But just notice to see it's signed by D Jimmy Doolittle. I, I was noticing that <laughs> it is signed by, by Mr. Doolittle. So yeah. that's, that's, that's incredible, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Let's go over to the next picture. Okay, uh, and where are you in this picture? I'm on the far left. You're the far left, and do you remember where this was at? This was at uh, in uh, one of uh, officers' quarters over in England. Okay, so this was in England. Yeah. Uh, and tell us who the other gentlemen are, if you well, know. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm blank on the two in the middle, but the one on the on the end, the name was Harry Quint, mm -hmm. and uh, he's from California. And he, after he got out of the service, he went to dental school. Right. And he is he's still he's, around. He's still he, with yeah. Us. Harry, Harry's still alive. I interesting little sidelight on Harry. He didn't have a middle name or a middle initial. And in the service, if you didn't, they'd put like Harry, N-M-I, no middle mm -hmm. initial Quint. So- uh, I can see where this is going. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, so Harry picked up a none. Yeah, People he, would say, if you answer, they call your name Harry. He'd say none. Middle initial, he'd say none. None. So Harry's <laughs> nickname was none. Harry Nunn Quint. <laughs> That's pretty good. Do you, do you keep in touch with him? I have in the past. I haven't talked to him in a while. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and now, now look at this picture. That's, that's right off of a poster board there. That, yeah. that was uh, taken in primary training. Okay. So, so how old were you in that picture right there? Do you remember? Well, I was born in 1921, so that, and that was in 44, so. That's, you're 22 about, I guess? Yeah. If you, depending on what, when yeah. your birthday was yeah. the year. Yeah. Could have been 21, yeah. 22. Yeah. Good looking pilot. <laughs> oh, <he's laughs> Has pretty. ace written all over it. <laughs> Describe this picture for us, if you well, could. Well, this is a, a target picture. What, what they did when we left the base, to come back to the States, they, if you wanted, they'd give you a copy of all the, if you bomb 35 times, they'd give you the mission photos, one a mission photo of each one, wow. but they wouldn't let you write on the back of it right. what it was or what the location, they just had it. And that's one of them of a, of a target over Germany. Yeah. Oh, someplace over Germany. Yeah. And now, as you can see, the, obviously the before picture, that was yeah. the night, you could see the river curving on the right yeah. part of the screen. Right. And obviously now you see that big kind of a blotch there right, right over the river. Uh, those are the bombs dropping, correct? Yeah. Yes, that was bombs. Probably were attacking a, the, a bridge or a uh, manufacturing facility located right there on the river. Right. And, and uh, same thing here, right? Just right, another yeah. aerial of, of and the, the white stuff you see there is not really clouds below you. That's probably fires and stuff coming up from bombs from, that have been dropped. Right, right, yeah, right. but exploded. All of your missions were during the day, correct? Right, right. yeah. Yeah, because I believe the British flew mostly yeah. at night, and the, the, was was yeah. that a, was there a reason for that? Well, uh, the the British didn't fly in formation and so forth like we did. They they flew in in a string, you know, single would, line type. Yeah, and and uh, they didn't uh, want to fly. The British didn't particularly want to fly at uh, in the daytime, and uh, and the Americans took that over and. and Perfected okay. that, so to speak. Okay. One other thing to look at here. This is, uh, in, for the viewers, they can't really read it, but what it is is it's called the Operational Sortie Record. And this basically logs every single flight that you had, and it, you can go right down the list, and we can look at the different cities you bombed around Germany and in France and in Holland. And then it, down at the bottom it says 35, so yeah. they sign off on it, and you've, you've got your ticket home, more or less, I guess, right. <laughs> is how that works. Yeah. And this, describe this picture for us. Well, this is a picture of a B-17, and on the tail you'll see a, a triangle with an H in it, and that was for the 306 bomb group. Okay. Yeah. What, was there anything on that plane that, that designated the 423rd, or was it just always the 306? No, it was always the 306. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now describe this to us. This had a, this. You told me an interesting little story about this yeah. patch, which we actually have the, the patch with us here. Yeah. Well, I, everybody, uh, they all the squadrons had a, a insignia this is, patch. This, this is, is the patch for the 423rd. 423rd, and uh, you'd put it on your jacket. You know that uh, right. leather jacket that you have. But 
the Germans took uh, offense at the that particular figure there. There's, I guess you call it a scare, a ghost or a devil or whatever right. it was, and uh, and, and uh, so there was some uh, people. Uh, U.S. people said, "Well, we better not. We think they put anybody who has to bail out." and is taken prisoner, if they had their jacket on that had this particular patch on it, that it might subject them to... So you didn't get to wear your patch while no. you were fine? Well, they didn't give you... The, by the time I got over there, they quit giving that patch out until you left. Oh, <laughs> you so you ready. couldn't wear it, I guess, yeah. yeah. So when you left, they gave it to you. Okay. Yeah. Now, you, you just brought this to us, and what is this? this I is, find this interesting. This, is, this is a cockpit of the, of the B-17. And so obviously you would be on the, the yeah. left-hand side, yeah. where that where you can see the wheel. Uh, do, do you remember what most of those instruments are? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, see, it had four mo four engines. Right. So there are four dials up there that give the airspeed. I mean the uh, RPMs, mm -hmm. and there's four of them that give the oil pressure and all that. So they they're really kind of the duplicate of a lot of them there. Right. Right. Yeah, but uh, it, it was fairly complicated. Uh, Procedure. T tell us a little bit. I believe your thirtieth mission yeah. ha had a little bit of a of a, a quirk in it, so yeah. to speak. F fill us in on that thirtieth mission. And okay. by the way, let's see. Your thirtieth mission was uh, to Lusendorf. Yes. Thank you. I can't pronounce it, that, I but can't. obviously it was in Germany. Yeah. And it just to let the viewers know, it says here that it lasted about eight and a half hours. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So fill us in on on, on mission number thirty, which well, you were five we, short of, of yeah. getting out. Yeah, well, we went in uh, uh, on uh, over Belgium and up lower through through the lower part of Germany, up in in, in into Germany to bomb this deal. And uh, at that, by the time we got to this point in the year, there were uh, not many German fighters still operational. Skies were pretty clear. Skies were pretty clear, and so your main problem was anti-aircraft fire. And their best weapon was a, an 88 millimeter anti-aircraft mm -hmm. gun that they used, and so uh, we were about uh, 25,000 feet, I guess, going over this target. Uh, 20, 25,000, I'm not sure. And an 88 millimeter shell went up through the wing, about oh, about from here to that flag, and went through the the gas tank. So that's no more than maybe eight to ten feet yeah, out your right, window. Right, right. Yeah, and it went up above. Fortunately, it didn't explode until it got above us and it exploded, but it didn't cause any further damage to the aircraft. But in going through the wing, I did two things. It ruptured the gas tank, and so we had gasoline spilling out of the a ruptured gas tank. The other thing it did, you control the pitch on your propeller with a hydraulic system so you can, you know, different speeds. Right. And uh, it ruptured those the lines to the that, and the engine, the left, the number two engine started windmilling. Now, when windmilling, that means it just turned free. Right. You, you didn't know, have any control. No over control it. over it, and it it started going real fast. Faster it got. Finally, it had enough friction to start a fire in that particular engine. It's time to get out of the plane. Yeah. Sounds like to me. <laughs> well, about, we were about over. Uh, uh, Belgium coming back at that time, and and we kept looking out, and I finally I looked. I said, "Well, we need to get out of here because there's gas, raw gasoline pouring out of the gas tank, and uh, uh, there's a fire there." So I gave the signal to bail out, and we all bailed out. We were about oh, 18,000 feet, I guess, when we bailed out, and everybody and landed okay. The, the entire crew made it back. Yeah, they landed in yeah, Belgium. Yeah. They picked you up and got you back. You took a little R and R. Yeah, interesting R and R. They they sent us out to uh, to a country, a state outside of London, and it was owned by Lord Mountbatten. And uh, his wife was there at the time we did our R and R. So I got to meet her, and play a little cards with. So how, so you got through your 35th mission. Anything particular about that last mission, or were you no. were just ready to get home? No, we were just ready to get home. It was a shorter. It was no, it was eight hours and 70 minutes. Yeah, a lot of your last ones yeah. were, were rather long. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, uh, uh, we, I had a total of, uh, of uh, 351 combat hours in 35 missions. Wow. Uh, part of them didn't, the reason it's more than, than uh, 35 times 10, say, which would right. be 350. Uh, some of them you'd go and come back, you know, and it wouldn't, uh, so that wouldn't count a, if, he, trips, right. if they had. Some missions would be scrubbed, you know, because of weather or right. other, uh, right. other conditions. We've got just a couple of minutes left. Well, is, is there anything else that you can uh, think of? No. Uh, well, I, I, I'll tell you uh, interesting. Uh, I got back in uh, in '45. I was right. That I, and I came down back to A and M at uh, in September of '45 to get my degree. Right. And in the, uh, in the meanwhile, I got married, and we lived over. Interestingly enough, in, on the fourth floor of Walton Hall. Wow. Where they made a. a apartment. They turned it into, I believe, married. Married, 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 uh, veterans, married right. veterans, yeah. So then that's a whole other story in itself. That's a whole we've, story. We've, abs we've actually run out of time. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, it goes quick, doesn't goes it? It goes quick, sure <laughs> does. It sure does. See, I told yeah. you it would. <laughs> I want to thank you for being here with us today, and we appreciate yeah. it. Well, I appreciate you inviting me so much. Absolutely. It's our Thank pleasure. You. On 8 August 1944, he flew his first mission in a B-17 to Caen, France. On 7 March 1945, he flew his 35th and final mission to Gießen, Germany, for about a total of 290 combat hours. And he had to ditch just one plane during that time. We salute Taylor Riedel for the commitment he made back in 1944. He served his country and did the job he was trained to do, and he did it quite admirably. Shake the hand of someone you see in the armed forces. Let them know you appreciate the commitment that they have made. Until next time on Veterans of the Valley, for the entire KMU-TV crew, Mr. Riedel and Tom Turbyville, I'm Kyle Netterville. So long.